The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Spouses Talking Houses with husband and wife real estate team Jennifer and Brian Frost. Everything you want to know about buying, selling, investing, and owning property. So let's get real about real estate. Welcome to Spouses Talking Houses. I'm Jennifer. I'm Brian. And today we're going to get real about Zillow. But before we do that, uh, what what have you been up to? Uh, let's see. Well, we had a couple closings last week, which is always good. Always fun. Uh, I think you put a house under agreement uh, over the weekend or on Monday, maybe? Yeah. So? Yeah, I think it was Monday, but you coordinated all the uh, getting it online and um, the photographs. I have to say, the photographer did a fantastic job. Yes, he did. It's a beautiful house, but the professional photos just brought it to the next level. Yeah, I, I like Rudy a lot. Yeah, so I think we had 12 groups of people at Saturday's open house and six groups of people at Sunday's open house. Um, and this is February, you know. Yeah, it's a good start to the year. Yeah. Good start to the year. So Spring market is upon us. I always say it starts January 1. Um, but let's talk about Zillow. So <laughs> can you trust Zillow? Uh, no. <laughs> I think uh, you can to an extent. It really depends on what market you're in and, uh, you know, how much data they have. Yeah, I think you can trust it as much as anything you find on the internet, which well, is I wouldn't call it verify. Trust. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What would you call it? I think it's a good place to start. There's a lot of data there. Uh, people love to use Zillow to search for homes. I can tell you that. Yeah, they definitely built the best real estate website as far as the consumer, you know, what the consumer can get. And um, well, until the new Keller Williams. Uh, App site, comes app out. There we go. Out. There you go. <laughs> um, so let's talk about, you know, I'm going to start sort of with the big picture. Zillow is a, what we call a real estate portal. They aggregate information from different, different um, areas. So they pull the public data regarding the deeds and the mortgages. They pull the public data regarding the taxes and the assessments. They um, pull the realtor data uh, which they get secondhand. We'll talk a little bit about that, about it being on the market and pull the sure. photos from there so that you have, you know, there's a great ease of search there and there's a lot of different information. Um, and then they attempt to analyze that information with their Zestimates. Exactly. I use my air quotes for that. <laughs> and sometimes they get it right. And sometimes they get it right. So, um, so they don't, uh, they don't list properties. They don't sell properties. They just aggregate information. They also own Trulia, and I mean the big three of the portals are Realtor, Trulia, and Zillow. Um, they own Hotpads. They own Dot Loop, which is a transaction document signing um, uh, uh, website uh, that we use. And um, they and have, they have different um, valuation models too between Trulia and Zillow. If you look at if you look at Trulia and Zillow for the same property, yeah. in most cases, you're going to see a different value. Even though they're owned by the same Yes. So whenever company. they haven't um, uniformed the AVM, the, the auto, auto, automated valuation model. So. All right. All right. So um, yeah. so tell me about the, what's an automated valuation model. Uh, basically, they're looking at uh, sales trends throughout a whole town or a large neighborhood. And obviously, the more data they have. So, I mean, obviously, they're going to get better numbers in Boston than they are in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Right, because there's more, more homes. More homes have right. sold. Yeah. So, they're looking at, uh, as you said, town records. They're looking at MLS sales. Well, first of all, there's no they. It's an <clears throat> algorithm. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so the, it's set up to look at town records, uh, to look at sales. Uh, they're making changes all the time. The thing they're not looking at is uh, condition because well, they, they don't know what the condition is. Yeah, they've never I mean, they, said they, what the they house. can go through town records, but more often than not, those aren't up to date or accurate. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, well, automated valuation models are not unique to Zillow. No, and I think that um, they're very popular with lenders sometimes to do, uh, you know, a refinance. Or an equity line where they, they'll just use They don't use want to some, pay the appraiser. <laughs> exactly. They'll just use some statistics to get a ballpark number. Exactly. 
And the other thing about AVMs is, in, in my opinion, there are a lot of areas of the country where you have these large subdivisions, all built by the same builder, and there's X number of different models, and so there's a ton of similar houses. And you have to remember what uh, color your garage door is to find your home <laughs> To find sometimes. your home, yeah. Yeah, you have to be sober to find your home. <laughs> oh, well, that could be a problem. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's a lot easier for a computer to do evaluation when you have you know, a subdivision of 400 sure. homes. And so when the houses sell, it's kind of an apples to apples comparison. Whereas here in New England, I can drop a pin in a map and within a mile, I've got a mobile home in a million dollar house. Sure. You know, I've got a little bit of everything all mixed in. So, um, and just on the appraisal side, Fannie Mae has been collecting uh, appraiser data for, for many, many, many years using our appraisals, right. looking at that data. To create an AVM. And they've created an AVM so they know when they get an appraisal in and there's an adjustment that looks crazy, right? they get back to the appraiser and say, well, you know, you're you're 30% over what you know our AVM is telling you so that we want an explanation on why you made that adjustment. Exactly, so. exactly. So, <clears throat> and they originally, I mean, that that goes back, the Fannie Mae thing goes back like 15 years at least. Probably. Yeah. I mean, obviously they've upstepped it, you know, with the um, technology upgrades that we've had over the last yeah. five or 10 years, but yeah. yes. But still, before they're going to lend money and use that house as collateral, they want an appraiser to actually walk through the house because the computers... In most cases. Yeah. Well, actually they don't want, they haven't figured out how <laughs> uh, how to replace us yet. <laughs> they're trying But to. they've been telling me since 1986 <laughs> when they started that uh, appraisers weren't going to be around, so... Right, right. It's okay. Nobody likes appraisers. No, they don't. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to break We get no you. respect. No respect. Um, I'm looking, I look today, I do this every now and then, I go look at the Zestimate in Zillow, and then I go to the fine print. How do we come up with the Zestimate? And then I go to the fine print again. So <clears throat> they say that um, that uh, they give for different metropolitan areas how they track their own accuracy. So in Boston, Massachusetts, metro area, their median accuracy or median error is 2.4%. So Boston, we know, is about 400000 average sales price, if I can use a round number. Really? Okay. Well, you, uh, you gave me all of Massachusetts the other right. day. Right. So Boston area obviously be a lot higher yeah, than Yeah, Boston that. area is a lot higher. But if I just use 400000 sure, a 2.4% error is 9600 bucks. So that's real money, number one. Number two... Median error means that half of the properties had a higher error in one direction and half of them had a higher error in the other direction, high and low. So it's more like a 5% More like a 5% sw swing, exactly. Then within 5% of the sales price, they said, hey, 77%, 77 point percent of um, the homes that sold when we compared them to our estimate were within... 5% of the sales price. So that means they were within $20,000 77% of the time. And that could be 20 under or 20 over. And that's only on a $400,000 house, which right. if you're really in the metro area, you're more like It's going to be higher than you're that. You're in the 6-700,000 range. Right. And then I love this. So they are within 20%, 99% of the time. You're like, "Well, that's great, except on a $400,000 property, that's an 80,000 swing." And it could be 80 below or 80 over. So it's really $160,000. I'm swing. guessing most homeowners could be almost as accurate with their own, their own value of their own house. I think you could <clears throat> get some random numbers and have your dog pick one <laughs> and you would be within 20%. There you go. Is, is that why we got a dartboard recently? That's why we got a dartboard recently. <laughs> so, so even Zillow, if you follow through and look at their own their own sure. evaluation of their estimates, they know it's just a ballpark figure. Well, most people do, yeah. Yeah, and I think most people do. And when I that. actually, when I do an appraisal, I'll look at the Zillow estimate just for, you know, for a laugh. Right. And then, I, because I know the homeowners probably looked at that too. And they're going to ask you about and it. And if it's way out of range, you know, I might mention to them that, uh, right. you know. By the way. Yeah, you by know. the way, I know your, I know Zillow says your house is worth you know, obviously I'm not going to tell them what their house is worth because my client is going to be the lender, but right. I might just give them a heads up. Yeah. Or, or, but, but when we do a market analysis for a homeowner, oh, sure. that's we know a, that's they've a different looked at story. that as oh, well yes, too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, so that's the accuracy of the estimates. And, and I mean, that's fine. It's, 
it's a computer. They haven't set foot in the house. They haven't come to the neighborhood. They don't know the condition of your property. Yeah. All of that is, you know, what do you really expect for an internet number? It's just something that kind of and they're sucks people they're in. tweaking the model all the time, getting they more are. data. So it's going to get better over the years. Yeah, it will. But until they go inside the house, I don't know how they can be accurate. Sure. Um, the main thing about Zillow that I'm, I'm, maybe people, maybe consumers understand this, maybe they don't, but their job is to sell advertising. Okay. And they call us agents constantly. So what they want to do is anytime that you click on something on Zillow is they want to sell me your information, right? Your name, your address, your phone number. Um, I have no problem with that. Um, a lot of agents are a little bit resentful of Zillow and rightfully slow because we put the house on the market. We put all the information in MLS. We do the nice photos. We put everything together. Then Zillow takes that information, puts it all online and charges us if, if we want to get the call. It's like, it's my listing. I've supplied you all the information. We did all the work. We did all the work. Right. And now you want me to pay to get the phone right, call. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that doesn't feel great, but we used to advertise in the, in the newspapers and You're it's the same thing. You're a premier agent. I'm a premier agent. Exactly. I get calls from Zillow. And we, uh, you know, we convert some of those leads. Yeah, we do. We so. do. What I don't like about it is that <sighs> there does not seem to be any incentive for Zillow to have that person speak to one agent. They want to be able to get as many agents to advertise with them as possible. So every single time that a consumer clicks on a property, they want to give them to a different agent. And to me, that's kind of a waste of my time. And I think it's a waste of the consumer's time. Particularly if you're, is it the case that the listing agent always comes up in the right-hand corner? Even No. No. That's, no. It used to be that way. That's not true anymore. Right. Yeah. So I think that's uh, kind of deceptive where, so if we have a property that's listed, uh, you know, it's our listing. It comes up and it shows a different agent from a different company. Right. Right. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people will assume, oh, that, you know, they're the listing agent. I'll give them a call. I'll give them a call. Yeah. So that's yeah. not in our best interest. As agents. That's what I mean, as right. agents. As agents, As a yeah. listing agent of that property. Right. Again, they're taking all of my marketing, exactly. and they're using it to- Our beautiful marketing. Our beautiful marketing. <laughs> they're using it to get another another agent's phone to ring. Um, I originally became a pre premier agent because by being a premier agent, it meant that on my own listings, I would always show up. They changed that a couple of years ago. Sure. Um, the way that they sell advertising is by zip code. So I need to say, I want to buy X zip code- there's a lot of different agents who also buy into that zip code and it just rotates us. It's a rotating us. basis. It's a rotation. Yes. And um, so I will get calls on properties and the consumer will think I know everything about that property and I don't because I'm not the listing agent. Yeah, tell me about this uh, foreclosure sale. I'm very interested because <clears throat> what, it's only $150,000? Oh, the pre-foreclosure <laughs> listings in Zillow. That's I have my, to tell that's you. That's my biggest pet peeve. That's where you cannot trust Zillow. Those are not real. No. Those are not real listings. When you see a pre-foreclosure property in Zillow, all it means is that at some point there was a notice of default by the mortgage lender. So at some point, this person got behind in their mortgage. They've not been foreclosed on. The bank does not own the property. The price that's listed on there is the Zestimate. So that has nothing to do with what the property may or may not go on the market for. And 99% of the time when I get a call on those pre-foreclosure properties and I follow them through, they're not for sale. No, they haven't even... They're not even close to hitting the They're market. They're not even close to hitting the market. So that is a way, it's particularly in this low inventory market, for Zillow to create more calls. Exactly. Which is what they're doing. They're selling, you know, they're selling those calls to the agents. So um, yeah, that that pre-foreclosure stuff, it's it's not real. It drives me crazy. Drives me crazy too. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting about Zillow is they're not realtors. And they do not get a direct feed of the realtor information. So they do not have the same legal and ethical obligation that we do to make sure the status is correct. And because they're getting the information second and third hand, they're the aggregator. And because they're not realtors, so they don't have the real estate license, they don't, they're not, they don't um, subscribe to the realtor code of ethics, 
And there are a lot of times when, you know, I go in and I change the status on a property to pending under agreement, and then two days later I'm getting calls and it's active, and I have to go in and try to correct that again. So the, the status is not always correct, and they do not have the same legal obligation that we do to make sure that it's correct, and that and, bugs me. And they really don't care. No, no. Um, yeah, sometimes it's easy to fix. Sometimes it's hard to fix, and, and I don't know why. I don't understand the difference. Um, another thing that Zillow has is a feature called Make Me Move. So I like that one. That's where a homeowner <laughs> can go on and say, my house is not really for sale, but if somebody were to make it worth my while, I would move. And so they just throw a price on it. And in a low inventory situation like the market is right now, I can look at that and be like, all right, here's somebody who may be willing to move. Sure. You know, maybe their their house fits the criteria for my, for my buyer. Um, the other things that Zillow is working on, they're trying to change their uh, business model. And they're trying to get away from having to rely on realtors for their advertising dollars. I do have to say the calls that I get from them are so annoying. You know, it's their job and I understand it, but I get like once a week call from Zillow trying to oh, get trying them to, to get you to expand your, uh, yeah, increase my ad spend and, and all this other stuff. Um, you yeah. know, I don't mind every now and then, but it's a little bit close to harassment. And it's not cheap. And it's not cheap. So the Zillow offers is something that they're coming out with. Uh, they're doing it in test markets right now. I think about 10 or 12 test markets across the country where Zillow actually will offer to buy somebody's house. So if there is a homeowner who is thinking, I don't want to put it on the open market. I just need some quick cash. I don't want to go through a bunch of hassle. Zillow will make them an offer. Um, I've looked online and you know, hey, how much can you trust the internet? But I've looked online just for some descriptions of people who've gone through the process. And from what I understand on the seller side, Zillow will make them an offer. They will charge them a 4.5% fee for something, another one something percent fee for something else. And then they send an inspector in and charge them for a cleaning, conditioning, repairs, etc., to get it marketable. Um, so they take that off the price as well. Then they will go ahead and, and close. It's a cash offer, and then they'll put it back on the market at a higher price. So um, like anybody else who's a flipper, they're looking to get it for a good price. Sure. And then you have to wonder if there's a conflict of interest between, hey, we give these estimates, and we also buy homes and want to make a profit on them when we flip them. I took a look at the Zillow... Um, uh, annual report to their shareholders. Uh, this is from 2018, actually. The 2019 I haven't seen yet. But they said their goal is to be purchasing 5,000 homes a month nationwide. Wow. So that's 60,000 homes a year. So if you've got one buyer in the marketplace who's buying that many properties, they are going to actually influence market values, right? There's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. So that's that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Um, Scary. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Zillow Mortgage is something that they're also moving aggressively with because um, if they could not only get the realtor advertising, but then they can also get a por portion of the mortgage pie. Don't blame them. That's a good strategy. Uh, we talked about the, the Trulia and the dot loop. So that's everything that I know about Zillow. Um, I, I just think they beat the real estate. I think they beat the real estate industry to the punch in making a really great website. Yeah, I mean, all of our clients uh, use Zillow. Yeah. Even if we give them our own website to do searches on, they're all using Zillow. Yeah, and they send me stuff on Zillow. And the first thing that I do when they send me a link to a Zillow listing is I go look for the MLS number. Yes. And if it doesn't have an MLS number, then I know that there's a good chance that it might not be a real listing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so do you end up spending a lot of time talking to clients about why the Zillow price is not the real price? Or are people somewhat aware of I it? think people are aware. When it first came out, it certainly was a topic of conversation. But I think at this point, most people know that 
that they want they want a much more accurate figure. Right. Is it's like the Kelly Blue Book value. I think people have Correct. over time figured out, okay, well that's not the number I'm really going to get. Right. Exactly, but it's a number that you look at just so yeah. that you have some sort of a benchmark. Yeah, because I I think the the thing that struck me when you were talking is yeah, if you don't take condition into account, yeah. that's huge. That's huge. Exactly. That's everything. We yeah. we've redone our kitchen and bathroom since we moved in. But don't let your assessor know. <laughs> we, we pull permits for all of it. Thank you. And, That's very good. We like we like people and, pull permits. You know, Zillow prices is the same or down yeah, sure. or a little up. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I think there's a huge difference between a home in you know move in condition versus a fixer upper. And if Zillow doesn't capture that, right. it doesn't tell you a heck of a lot. No. And Zillow, um, you know, one of Zillow's a uh, platforms or philosophy is that they want to make the whole home buying and selling process more efficient by giving mm -hmm. people all this information, which I think is great. On the other hand, as far as their advertising goes, the Zillow leads that they send us, the name and email and phone number, um, a good conversion rate on that for a realtor is like 3%, which means mm. you're going to talk to 100 people wow. and you're only really going to work with three of them. I do not think that's efficient at all. Right. And, you know, I think I think um, it's good that they're trying to move away from that. But the Zillow offers, you know, if they're going to buy 60,000 homes a mm -hmm. year, and they're also the ones who are out there giving the consumer the data and the prices, I think that's a conflict of interest. And what What about on the advertising model from them? Are, are you paying for impressions or click-throughs or...? You pay a monthly fee, and you're guaranteed a certain number of impressions. Okay. And you're not guaranteed any sort of a click-through no. or what have you. They also do not put my real phone number on there. They, put, they make up a phone number mm -hmm. so that that way when the consumer calls and it gets transferred to my number, it's identified as a Zillow call. That's uh, good for them because it shows me that... It's good for you, yeah. Right. I well, mean, you it, know how effective their advertising exactly. is. Exactly. So I know that it came from their advertising. On the other hand, I will have people who are just Googling my name. You know, they're from a title company or whatever, and Zillow has great SEO, so my information <laughs> shows up, uh, and they're calling on that number. And so Zillow's counting that as, you know, hey, our advertising's what we working. we did for you. And it's really yes, like you exactly. just inserted yourself in there. That's yeah. interesting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I don't have anything against them. I know a lot of realtors, you know, their head starts to explode when you mention Zillow to them. Um, you know, they, they have, they've got a business, and they're doing a good job of it. My biggest problem is those pre-foreclosures. That's not real listings. I don't think they should be out there under for sale. No. No. And we wouldn't continue to be a premier agent if we weren't converting some of those leads. Exactly. At least a, at least a few a year. Yeah. And I like having, being a premier agent, I like being able to go in and edit and correct my own listings right. without having a big hassle about it. Yeah. So that's the story on that. And um, we, we had fun getting real about real estate, and we'll see you in the next episode. Music courtesy of the Eric Lindbergh Trio. Please visit his website at www.ericlindberghworld.com. Jennifer and Brian are licensed to practice real estate in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Brian is also a certified general appraiser in New Hampshire. They are not lawyers, accountants, home inspectors, or therapists. Real estate customs and rules may be different in your area. Each Keller Williams Realty Office is independently owned and operated. The realtor name is trademarked to members of the National Association of Realtors. If you are currently under contract with a real estate agent, this is not intended as a solicitation. Views expressed on this podcast by Jennifer may not be shared by Brian and vice versa, nor are they necessarily the views of Keller Williams Realty. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.